running mobility. Maybe you're gonna go for a run, you just got home from a run, etc. cetera. Uh, running is hard on the body, it's hard on the joints. It's really important that you work to increase your mobility and maintain your mobility and flexibility with running. I would say more so sometimes than other exercises. So hopefully you'll enjoy this flow. We like to try to work our hamstrings here. You don't need to have a fancy weight bench, a chair will work great. So if you have a chair, if you have a step, whatever, some sort of an incline, just kind of walk your legs out and then you're gonna take a leg and a leg. You're gonna put it up on your surface. It doesn't matter if you're bent, you're gonna step back from it a little bit and then you're gonna inhale and you're gonna cross your opposite arm over and then take both arms up and then you're gonna cross the other way. So we're coming up with a nice lifted torso and then we're hinging forward from our hips and just kind of reaching. You'll feel right away. You'll kind of feel your, the back of the leg kind of give a little bit. So this movement, rather than holding these static stretches maybe on the ground that make us feel bad or that we mostly feel in our lower back, you'll feel a lot of loosening through the hammies instead. One more time each way. And then on the same leg, we're going to do pigeon pose using this elevation. So take the leg. And just like you would do pigeon on the floor, you're gonna flex your foot so it's really strong. And then you're gonna keep your upper body lifted and strong as well as you bring your opposite hip towards the heel. And then get up nice and high and slowly lower. You can kind of play with the hand placement. This is a gorgeous stretch. I'm smiling because it feels so good. Whether or not you run, you can kind of play with the hand placement, but you're gonna keep your foot really strong and keep trying to roll that back hip forward. You can move around. But all this really helps tightness in the psoas in the piriformis muscles. Keep your chest really lifted and your back super strong. Three, two, you can always hold these longer than I do or come back and do them again as well if it's not quite enough time for you. And then carefully come up and then we're gonna do the other side. So take your leg up, help it if you need it, wiggle around a little bit. Mobility feels a lot more free to me than some stretching does. And again, we're coming up, we're keeping our shoulders very relaxed as we just reach opposite arm over, hinging forward, not pulling, not rounding my back, forcing anything to happen, breathing all the way up the hamstring. You'll probably feel this in your calf as well. The spine too. We're all connected. So any mobility work that you do is gonna help your entire body, but this one, these flows I find to be extra beneficial for my runners. One more. I run a little bit, not much. Not like you guys do, I'm sure. And then let's find pigeon on this side. That side naturally is gonna have a little more flexibility as well. So just, this is not your side, this is not my side. <laughs> Keep the foot strong, roll the back hip down, figure out where you want your hands, and then put a little pressure on this front leg. Piriformis. You're gonna feel this all the way down your IT band as well. You might feel it in your knee and lower back. Just breathe easily. Draw the shoulders down away from your ears. Keep moving the hip towards the heel. Try not to grip the energy in the hips where there's soreness, tightness. We're using this incline to really work into spaces that are hard to get when you're on the ground. Really a lot of isolation into the lifted leg as well. Oh, then come on up. I'm gonna move the bench. You guys don't need to if you have space. <clears throat> Next series do we're gonna do is a little cross hack series. So you're gonna take your feet super wide, and then you're just gonna come down first to one side, and then you're gonna stay really low. And if you can't do this without support, just put your hand down. And then you're gonna come into a low hip flexor on this side. Lift your opposite arm up, and then as you come up through the upper back, you're pressing through the front heel, driving through the back hip. Lots of mobility in the spine, and then you're gonna come like this, down into a hammy release, trying to square the hips, and then you're gonna come up again, and you're gonna reach through the back arm for a twist, and then put the fingertips on the ground and reach through the front arm for a twist. And then you're gonna come up, turn back to the front and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So either walking across or coming into this cross hack squat. Opposite arm is up, really lifted through the upper back. We're working with our breath. And then flowing right into the hamstring. This kind of constant movement. You'll notice I'm kind of shifting my hips. Do what feels good. 
back arm twists, breathe across your back and shoulders, light fingertips, front arm twists, relax your neck. And then walk it back. We're gonna do that again. Let's go a little quicker and with a little more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. I'm going to lift my knee this time for the twist. You don't need to. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Just drop that back knee if this doesn't feel good. And then come across and do it again. Low, 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 low. And turn. Inhale. Exhale. You'll kind of learn how to move in these flows to find the best way for your body. Inhale. Always exhale to rotate, guys. Inhale. Knee down if you need it. Good. And then this time, we're going to come to the center. And we'll start up kind of high. So turn your toes out, your toes, your tees. <laughs> and then come down into a really low squat. If you can't do this, it's totally fine. Stay up here and just kind of play with the feet side to side. And try not to lean forward too much. Otherwise, come down, kind of put your triceps on your legs. And then inhale. My shoulders are back and down. Inhale, reach. Exhale. One more time each way. Try to keep the feet flat, but you can move if you need to. This should just feel really beautiful and delicious in the lower body. And the upper body as well, right? Heck yeah, man. Oh, then come up. Take your feet forward and come into Randall. So a little sway side to side, relaxing the torso completely. I'm gonna get out of seat. I'm gonna work on the front of the body just a little bit and then we're good. It should feel really nice. Feel nice, you can tell. <laughs> that tired mobility feel. You're gonna take your hand in a fist and you're gonna inhale, do a full circle. And then the same thing the other side. So that arm comes down, fist, fist, fist. The most range of motion you can get from your shoulders, and then you're just gonna lift your hips and feel that stretch in the front of the body. Let's do it again. So inhale, exhale. Tons of upper body required in your running. Having strong postural muscles and open shoulders is really helpful. This is hitting the hips and the shoulders as well. Inhale, roll them back. Don't worry about how this looks. How does it feel? How do you feel this affecting your shoulders and your posture? Inhale, lift up. One more time. Play with where your hands go. What feels good? Mobility is about feeling good. Ah, now go enjoy your run. Or if you got back from one, you can kind of repeat those postures and see what feels good for your body. Have a fantastic day. Thanks so much.